Hello and welcome to this video on dividing decimals. Now there's pretty much only one point for this topic that you need to remember and it's that you need to ensure that you're dividing by a whole number and when you're not dividing by a whole number I'll tell you how you can deal with that. But if you are dividing by a whole number then you can do this division in exactly the same way as you would normally divide numbers save by short division or the bus stop method as it's otherwise known. So let's say we want to do this first one, 1a, we want to do 3.2 divided by 8. Do you remember that we can write it like this? So 3.2 and this kind of bus stop shape divided by eight. And if the decimal point is here, then you need to make sure you've also got the decimal point aligned just above it. And then we do exactly the same thing as before. How many times does eight go into three? Well, it doesn't. If you have three suites and you share it between eight people, then no one gets a suite, so it goes in zero times, but you still have the three suites left. So you can put the remainder of three on here, and now it's how many times does eight go into 32, where it goes in four whole times. And there we go, that is the answer. We get 0 0.4. What about the second one? We've got 14.1 divided by three. So we do exactly the same thing. We're dividing by a whole number, so that's okay, that obeys this rule. So we do 14.1 divided by three. We put the decimal point in the same place in the result. And then we do, well, how many times does three go into one? You can't do it. But you could do threes into 14, which goes four times, and it's remainder two. So we put the remainder of two here. Then how many times does three go into 21? It's seven times. And so we get a result of 4.7. Now this one's interesting because we got six divided by five. And they are both whole numbers, but we can do exactly the same thing. We're doing six divided by five. So the number you're dividing by goes on the left. Now, how many times is five going to six? Well, it goes in one time with a remainder of one. Ah, but we've run out of digits. We have nowhere to put the remainder of one. Now we could put remainder one, but we want to work out what this is as a decimal. So what we do, and here's the trick, is you just create extra digits for yourself. Six is the same as 6.00, isn't it? So I can always just arbitrarily add zeros on the end as long as I put the decimal point in the right place. So we've got a decimal point here, so we need a decimal point here as well. And we said, well, five went into six once, but we had a remainder of one, so we've now got a place to put that remainder. And then how many times does five go into 10? Well, it's twice, and we are done because we don't have any digits left. We didn't really need that extra zero there. So it's 1.2. Right, the next one, we got 0 0.98 divided by seven. We do exactly the same thing. We divide by a whole number, so that's okay. So 0 0.98 divided by seven, put the decimal point in the same place. How many times does seven go into zero? It goes in zero times, and there's no remainder. How many times does seven go into nine? Once, remainder two. And then how many times does seven go into 28? Well, it's four times, so we get 0 0.14. Next one, four. Five divided by 0 0.2. Ooh. Now this breaks the rule. We want to ensure we're dividing by a whole number, but this is no longer a whole number that we're dividing by. Now the way we deal with this, well imagine you had say like 6 divided by 3. Well we know that's 2. Now let's just say that we multiply both these numbers by 10. We would have 60 divided by 30. Now what's 60 divided by 30? Well it's still 2. So you can see if you multiply both those numbers by 10 or by 100 etc, if as long as you multiply them by the same number, you get the same result. And it's the same with fractions. Do you remember with fractions you can multiply the numerator and denominator by whatever you like and it will be an equivalent fraction. And a division is effectively just a fraction, so it has the same rule. You can multiply both these numbers by the same thing and it will have the same value. So that means we can multiply both of these by 10 so that's 50, and 0 0.2 times by 10, well that moves the decimal point once, so it's gonna give us two. So now we've got a much simpler result. 50 divided by two is equal to 25. And some students get confused here. They think that they have to now adjust this, but because we times these by 10, we have to somehow divide this by 10. But no, this is the same as that. So that is the answer. Right, question five, we got 4.698 divided by 0 0.06. Now, we need to make sure the thing we're dividing by is a whole number. So, this is not a whole number, so what do we need to multiply by? Well, we wanna get six, don't we? So we need to multiply this by 100, because multiplying by 100 will move the decimal point two times to get six. So let's multiply both of these by 100. Multiply this by 100, it moves the decimal point twice, one, 
two, we get 469.8. And now we're dividing by six because 0 0.06 times 100 is six. And now we can use exactly the same method as before because we're now dividing by whole number. So 469.8 divided by six, six into four, you can't do, but six into 46, it goes in seven times remainder four. Six is into 49, it goes in eight times remainder one. Make sure you put the decimal point up here as well. And then six into 18, it goes three whole times. So the final answer to this was 78.3 and no further adjustment is needed. And then finally this one, we've got 0 0.050853 divided by 0 0.11. Now, we need to divide by a whole number. So what do we need to multiply this by? Well, multiplying by 100 again will do. So we multiply both these by 100. That becomes 5.0853 divided by, well, that becomes 11. And now we're dividing by a whole number, so we can do exactly the same thing. So we've got 5.0853. Put the decimal point up here in the same place, and we're dividing by 11. So 11 is into 5. Well, it goes in zero times, but we still have the five remaining. 11s into 50, we can do, it goes in four times remainder six. 11s into 68, it goes in six times remainder two. 11 into 25, it goes twice, remainder three. And then 11 goes into 33, exactly three times. So we can stop. And that is the answer, 0 0.4623.